right, good evening, folks. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a... It is Saturday night out here. November 15th, 2025, 10.01 p.m. California time here. Latest activity shows a 1.5 earthquake um, somewhere out here on the globe. Nothing big. As uh, far as any larger activity goes here, we'll, we'll go ahead and check that out here in a minute. But... Uh, we do have some Cascadia trimmer uptick going on here this evening and throughout the day today with 348 epicenters of slow slip events going on across the southern end of the Cascadia. Notice that that's just kind of southeastward here of that strike slip boundary along the Blanco fracture zone where we've seen a, a number of earthquakes out here recently. Uh, notice that... Uh, 3.3 out there early this morning about three o'clock in the morning that's just a number of earthquakes that have been stirring up out there along the blanco fracture zone uh there in the strike slip boundary okay so when earthquake activity is stir uh cr stirs up out here that applies further strain southeastward here into the southern end of the cascadia so that would match where we are seeing the trimmer activity stir up here so increasing pressure out here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, no big earthquake activity for now, but just you know, realize that the southern end of the Cascadia can see some partial rupture earthquake activity out here historically uh, compared to a full rupture. Uh, but still, regardless of an 8.1 or an 8.2, that'd be fairly uh, significant as far as earthquake activity goes out there across the area. But Keep an eye on it. It's been fairly uh, active out there. Uh, Pacific Northwest, really not a whole lot going on there for now. The Bay Area of California, some smaller activity there throughout the evening. Uh, looks like the oh, through the afternoon, I should say. The latest activity shows a 2.0 off of the Bayview Mountain um what is that, Mount of Inn? I've, I've never heard of that area. Uh, that is off the Hayward Fault there. A very small microquake activity up there on the northern end, up there of the bay. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing big going on there for now. Uh, southern portion here of the state, uh, latest activity shows a 1.1 around the southern end here of the, the uh, San Jacinto Fault Zone. I don't see anything major going on out here across Southern California for now. Yellowstone National Park, nothing major going on. The oil fields out here definitely kicking up. There's a 3.3 earthquake outside of Pecos, Texas, out there in the uh, oil fields of Texas here. That is, uh, you know, let's go ahead and zoom in here just to show you guys and verify what's going on out here. This, of course, is the desert area of Texas. There may be some new or maybe if some older oil fields out here, it's in a, you know, in a major oil field zone. There's a wastewater pond very close to the area of the earthquake today, within probably about a mile or so. But uh, it's, you know, if you look here on the map, there's ginormous amount of oil field pumping operations out there in this area of Texas. So there's nothing new, but occasionally we can see some large earthquake activity out there around the four to five range. That is not happening yet. It's been a few months since we've seen anything like that, but it can happen out here. Uh, one earthquake up here around Ohio and the Youngstown area. Kind of an odd earthquake there. That's actually from last night. They included. They actually included that after the fact. If if you check here, the USGS includes earthquakes after the fact, including stuff like this up here in the Canada. There's this earthquake of a 4.1 earthquake struck uh, late last night, early this morning. That was not on the map here this morning. So that came in after the fact. It looks like maybe some geologists here are just, you know, kind of catching up for their work. You know, there's some work to be done here and they're finally catching up to some of the earthquake activity that's happening out here. Uh, as far as any major activity goes across the globe for now, I, I do need to lower that just a tad bit here. There we go. Um, any major activity going on. Newer activity is consisting down there across the northern end of the, the uh, 
South Sandwich Trench. There's the 5.0. Um, turkey area starting to swarm back up. You know, it's just, just a uh, typical area of swarming that you normally see on a daily activity. Philippines southward, nothing big. This is just a very typical area of, uh, of threes and fours. Uh, some newer activity at, up across the northern edge here of the Kuro Kamchatka Trench. There's that super deep earthquake there on the backside of Japan, more than likely associated with the Japan the uh, Nankai Trough. Nothing further to, to uh, notice here across that area for now. Some activity up in Alaska, but really nothing major. Um, it is kicking up here a little bit here in the last hour. Got a number of ones and twos out there, but if you look at the 2.5 model and above, there's only been a handful out here in the last 24 hours, but um, the Alaska area, of course, is very capable of producing some big time uh, earthquake activity out there for sure. Yeah, there's that earthquake way up into Canada, 4.1 from late last night. Uh, nothing, like I say, nothing major going on here. You know, if you look at the last 24 hours here of earthquake activity, that only consists here of a 5.0, a rinky-dink 5.0 down here across the South Sandwich Trench. This is, this is, if you look at and compare the last, you know, several months or so of earthquake activity, this is a very minor day of earthquake activity out here. And this is a complete flop when you, when you consider here that, Supposedly, the space weather activity that we've been seeing should elevate activity, right? We've been bombarded with multiple X flares, hit with G4 class storming, KP index up around 8 or 9, um, Aurora seen down to low levels, proton events been elevated like crazy. You know, I, I don't think I could think of a more powerful system there in terms of solar weather activity in, in the recent past where we should see elevated earthquake activity and it's just not happening this is day three or day yeah it's day three since it halted since the space weather activity has come to a halt so um, as i said earlier this morning i'm writing this down in my handy dandy notebook where this is a complete flop this is literally a complete flop you can't say this is going to occur three months down the road you know look, look what happened Three months down the road, there's an 8.0 earthquake going on. That's because of the space weather activity. You cannot say that, okay? I'm just, that's just a comparison. I waited three days for a lenient time period. Nothing major has happened. And I, I'm more inclined into thinking that Aurora, acti or not Aurora activity, but the coronal hole activity that's out here, um, stirs up earthquake activity more than what we've seen here because we just witnessed here in the last week a major solar weather event and nothing big happened in the earthquake department. That is a fact. You know, nothing, nothing, zip zero. We were minor. In fact, we were well below the average number of earthquakes that struck out here uh, during this solar period. 95 is out here. We also got 96, but it's really nothing big. There's no major coronal hole activity stirring up out there. Um, sunspot activity. Well, we're gonna we're gonna drop that. We are gonna drop that significantly for the flaring threat out there. I I don't see anything major out there for the flaring activity right now because uh, the source of all of our X flare activity and the space weather activity is no longer visible out there. Looking at this forecast right now, we're issuing a 1% chance or less for an X flare activity event. M flare is down at 10%. C flare activity at 40%. And this is my own observation here. There's nothing out here at all uh, that would be worthy of producing any significant flares. These guys are still a little bit elevated out here, but I guarantee you tomorrow, this will be a major a lowered threat out there, but I issued those threats and there's nothing, nothing um, from the earth facing side of the sun that warrants any elevated flaring activity for now. Aurora activity, these guys are basing the, the um, 
recent chrono hole activity. See that G1 class storm, but 95 is w positioned way up north on the northern hemisphere of the sun. If you think about it, that shooting magnetic lines in the high speed solar wind stream north of our Earth sun plane. I am not worried about that whatsoever. I don't think that will come to play, and we'll find out here in the next couple of days as um, that forecast will probably ring true. I'm not gonna, I'm that's not gonna happen. Nothing major going on there for the Storm Prediction Center for now. Just some thunderstorm activity out there across the southwest area. Um, and Southern California, you know, they're, they're definitely getting some decent rainfall out there, I would say. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the latest uh, weather radar. I don't know if they got what they were calling for, though. You know, it's, um, it's interesting because sometimes if, if the low-pressure system does not access the atmospheric river as forecasted you'll just get some light activity there's some thunderstorms down there popping up east of los angeles it looks like around the uh, west covina area but um you know it's i don't think they got the rainfall that they were expecting out here at least according to the weather radar imagery i'll have to check back on that um, by the morning update but there's a uh, push of moisture coming up north from the south here that uh, will probably uh, hit my area overnight and into the morning. Let's go ahead and put this uh, weather model into motion here and we'll take a look at the GFS model. Notice that uh, moisture, you know, kind of wrapping around, typical low pressure system wrapping up swing moisture north. Uh, this is gonna combine with a precipitation maker that's coming in from the Pacific right now. Uh, well early next week we got some sufficient moisture coming in there uh, to northern california southern california get involved in that as well and there's another cutoff low but that almost looks like it swings south in the baja california <laughs> that's crazy to see that that far south uh, and then after that folks we got uh we got some conditions to worry about out here uh, because that blocks the pattern out there for the uh, pacific jet uh, far as you know precipitation goes got some massive cold pool areas out there from canada um, much below average for the precipitation or the uh the temperatures out there uh, probably well below average for the uh, precipitation but uh you know that's uh definitely we got a lot of cold air displacement and it looks like december is going to be much colder Look at that. We're talking about 20 degrees or so below average up there for Montana and North Dakota for this time of year. And they're already cold for this time of year uh, in December. So we're talking about major cold spell coming in. That includes the West Coast. And this will probably drip down further into the uh, center portion of the country. So we'll have to watch that. There's definitely a major uh, weather event that's taking place up there. And... Uh, We'll just have to see what happens here, folks. Uh, in the meantime, uh, no major earthquake activity going on. You know, it's. I, I wish I could say that this would be one of the events that uh, space weather has definitely stirred up earthquake activity. But, you know, I, I waited my three days. You know, there's been people out there saying that, well, you have to wait three days since the arrival of the space weather activity. We, we waited our three days, but... I think three days is fairly lenient. Here we are. There's no major earthquake uptick. uptick. We can't say we have to wait three months because that's foolish, right? Why should I have to wait even one day? When earthquake activity occurs from a result of a space weather event, that should happen immediately, not three days. That's, that's <laughs> come on. Let's use a little common sense here. So that was a complete flop. I'm stressing on that a lot because a lot of people out here tend to focus and voice their opinion like, look at this, folks. We're getting slammed with auroras. Aurora seen down in the Southern California. KP index up around 8 or 9. Wait for major earthquake activity. There's your major earthquake activity of 5.0. <laughs> in the last three days, you know, since the... Uh, the 
aurora activity stopped and the space weather stopped, you know, there's, there's, there's not any major space weather, or there's not even major earthquake activity occurring. So uh, I call it like I see it, and I'm calling the facts out like I see it. And that are, that's the facts. This is going down in my book, a big old flop. That's what I call it, the big old flop here. You know, if this was the time where things were going to stir up, this would have been it. And <laughs> F-L-O-P. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good evening. Um, we'll see you guys out here for the Sunday morning update. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things here where, you know, it's people, scientists, geologists, YouTubers like to call out events as they see them. And right now I'm kind of voicing my, my, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? My opinion, my own observation when it comes to the relationship between the two, right? Space weather, the solar activity and earthquakes right now, I from my observation, I see more of an uptick during coronal hole activity than I do at any time because there should have been some major earthquake uptick following this major significant space weather event that, that we just got through dealing, dealing with in the past week. You know, you can't say, oh, that didn't hit us. You know, it was a miss. It was, <laughs> we've seen auroras in crazy places. Um, recently so and the proton events were slamming us for like four to five days you know that's so uh, the frustration occurs because of the the um, the data I receive out here from quite a few folks you know like saying that uh, that we should that that earthquake activity is going to occur and it doesn't you know back in uh, may of last year we seen a major solar weather event auroras down in northern california um down into even i think mexico big time massive x flares and multiple cmes that were slammed into the planet back in may of last year and there was nothing going on similar to this this you know and that's what i gotta stress about enough you know it's just because if we're going to point a finger at something and say this is the cause of this, we have to back up that finger with data and accurate information. But it is not happening the way that a lot of people are saying. I do think space weather activity has an effect here on the planet, but solar flares, um, CME activity, Proton events do not have an effect on the earthquake activity. I think it has something to do more with the, uh, the uh, coronal hole activity because magnetic lines are shooting out from that coronal hole. We've seen it. We, you know, In the past couple months, we've seen major uptick in earthquake activity across the Philippines and everywhere else during a massive coronal hole event that's facing the planet. That's definitely more of a factor uh, when it comes to the uh, earthquake relationship to the sun. But, hey, you know what? Let's give it another year, a couple years. I'll put t together a total tally and we'll see how the graph looks. But <laughs> it's not looking good for uh, flaring activity and uh, CME activity and proton events. That's for certain. All right. Have a good one, folks. Enough of my yakkering and yankering or whatever it's called. We'll see you guys out here in the morning for the Sunday morning update. Take care, folks. Stay safe.